I live in a beautiful place called Westchester County, New York, and I really enjoy activities that put me on the road a lot. I like to cycle, I like to run, I like to drive a car. A thing that I've noticed is that our roads are most charitably described as being of variable quality. Some of them are freshly repaved and the rest are extremely bumpy. Now, after years of becoming an expert at complaining about this, I decided to see whether I could quantify how bumpy the roads are. And I decided to try to do a project that would allow me to determine this with things that I use every day, like my phone and my car. So, this project aims to use the accelerometer inside a standard Android phone, along with an application, which I put together pretty simply, and freely available tools from Google to try to plot the major bumps on some major roadways in Westchester County, namely the Taconic State Parkway, Route 9, and Route 117. When it comes to a standardized testing platform, what we're using is the 2016 Nissan Sentra. Our acceleration sensor, which is my phone, will always be in the cup holder sideways. This is a decent position for it because it's easily repeatable. I can just kind of put it there. And this kind of standardizes where the telephone is sensing over multiple trial runs. Additionally, it's directly in contact with the car, meaning that it will feel every vibration, as opposed to putting it in something like my GPS holder, which is on a swinging arm, which might add further confounding variables. This is my phone. It's a Motorola Droid 2 Turbo. Its primary feature is the fact that it has a great battery life. It doesn't really do much else other than being a standard Android phone. And what I did was I wrote an application, which is called Potholes, and what Potholes does is it will record the acceleration on the phone and kind of log it every second. I wanted to do a set log every second because it seemed like kind of a good trade-off between file size and granularity. You've got an x-axis, y-axis, and a z-axis. And the linear acceleration is just the x squared plus the y squared plus the z squared, and you take the square root of that. It's kind of a Pythagorean theorem thing in three dimensions. And basically, you also get the GPS Latin long as well as a time reading. Now, the potholes are something which could cause a big jolt, causing some acceleration. Now, what you'll notice is that all three axes are close to zero by default, and that's because Android cancels out gravity for you in a certain acceleration recording mode, which is super awesome. Now, the problem is acceleration can come from a bunch of different places. It can come from corners, it can come from potholes, and it can come from speeding up and slowing down. In my first run of this experiment, what I found was that I got a whole bunch of sort of high readings when I was going kind of starting, stopping, or in a big turn. And all of these things were generally happening below about 30 miles an hour. So after showing the results to some friends, I actually got a suggestion that I should probably take some GPS data uh, in terms of speed into account. So I also actually log the speed and I'm able to calculate the acceleration by computing the difference in time between two recordings, which are roughly a second apart, and uh, the difference in speed between the two data points. So I wrote the application to record the accelerometer and GPS data in Android Studio and Java because that's kind of what I'm most familiar with. Very simple app. Things that I learned are that you basically have to add all sorts of permissions to the manifest to let it read the data and write a file. I'm using kind of the legacy Android uh, file writing mechanism because it's a lot easier. In terms of the way the accelerometer and GPS sensors work, basically both of them use a listener pattern you will get pushed updates from the Android system whenever Android detects a change, as opposed to being able to pull updates on a timed loop. And basically for the GPS, I'm just kind of recording the latitude, longitude, and the speed. And I should be using getters and setters, but I'm not. Basically every second I'm just going to read the GPS. It probably doesn't change all that much, so that's probably okay. The accelerometer, what I'm doing is basically I am pushing all the values every time I get an update to a list so that I can basically get my standard deviation and my average and my max over that past second. And basically what I'm doing is I am asking for those 
I believe that there is a need for a little bit of thread safety because the could be a potentially a uh, different thread that is pushing the values in the thread that you're using to read it. What I basically have is I am using a synchronized block here where I'm basically going to read all the values from a link block in queue and reset the queue and keep, push value, keep pushing values to it and then compute the average standard deviation and the maximum. So the app is really simple. It basically, all it does is it acts as a mechanism to record values from the Android system sensors and write it to a CSV file for later use. So basically once the app has been run, what it spits out is an output like this CSV. And it's just basically a time series of elapsed seconds since the start of the recording, an average acceleration, a standard deviation acceleration, a maximum acceleration, a latitude, and a longitude. Now in the later iteration, what I ended up doing was also including a speed in meters per second. This is the calculated GPS speed. I didn't really do much to it. And on top of that, what I do is I basically compute some other things. Since the Android app uses a loop that waits for a second, the time interval between readings is always going to be a bit more than a second because it takes some amount of time to do the computation and the recording of that. So basically what we've got is a time interval between two readings. Since we have the speed in meters per second, if we uh, divide it by the elapsed time, the change in speed by the elapsed time, we will get an acceleration. So this is kind of our speed delta. And as we can see, it's very simply the speed uh, at this moment minus the speed in the previous moment, same as the time interval, which is kind of the time at this moment minus the time in the previous moment. Acceleration, it's just um, the speed change over the time change. And after some experimentation, basically I did some statistical analysis and kind of decided to pick, I believe the 90th percentile of accelerations as being anomalous. And that turned out to be approximately one. And this uh, one is kind of meters per second squared or so they claim, although it kind of seems to be uh, not correlated very much with the acceleration. Um, as well as this uh, standard deviation of the acceleration changing. So standard deviation of the acceleration means kind of that the readings were all over the place during that one second as opposed to a smooth acceleration as one might expect in a well-executed corner. Now this F3, this is basically the speed in meters per second has to be greater than 10, which is approximately 30 miles an hour. And the reason that I did this was because I found that there were a lot of readings at lower speeds that kind of were not necessarily indicative of road quality as I perceived it. As in basically every time I started and stopped, there were a whole lot of bumps. And then the other one is the absolute value of the GPS acceleration is less than 0.5. This means that you've got all your acceleration coming from the uh, accelerometer and the GPS thing, the car isn't speeding up or slowing down. This doesn't really account for corners, but on the highway when you're going more than 30 miles an hour in the particular sections of road that I wrote drove on, there aren't that many major corners. So after the first run, without the speed correction, I basically had a result that looked like this. Basically, every time I started and stopped, which is kind of in the purple circles, we have a bunch of data points. And these data points are the places where there's a lot of acceleration going on. Everything else, I tried to keep the speed constant. I basically tried to put the cruise control on at the speed limit and hang out. And the result basically is you take this, you apply the filter, and once you apply the filter, you'll get kind of all the points which seem to be a bump. Now, Google Maps, My Maps is really convenient. You can basically, what you do is you can kind of add a layer and this layer you can basically import data from a existing Google Doc or a CSV. I was really happy because I got a uh, Google Doc um, and you can just literally import the data. Now the thing is that it won't pick up filters. So basically what I did was I filtered it and then I copied the data over to a second CSV potholes V2 Taconic filtered. You'll see all the, these are only the rows where the filter criteria is true, where there was over a meter per second squared of acceleration from the accelerometer and the GPS said, you're doing nothing. Now, the other thing I ended up doing here was kind of adding a, there's kind of 
multiple filter criteria, right? So the when I ended up making these layers, I, I basically had the minor bumps and the major bumps. And you can see the, the major bumps are your um, basically 1.5 meters per second squared and 0.25 meters per second squared standard deviation. The minor bumps are only one meter per second squared. Again, assuming that the meters per second squared is actually an accurate metric. And we can see kind of as anyone that's driven the Taconic might be aware, the Taconic is a pretty bumpy place. It's got a lot of these major bumps. Route 9A is pretty smooth, but once in a while it has a big sort of jolt. Now, this section here on 287, I know that I was speeding up and slowing down a bunch because there were cars in the way preventing a GPS, a cruise control maintained speed limit. So some of these data points might be erroneous. It's actually a fairly smooth road, but as you can see, kind of this section of the Taconic down here is perceivably a lot smoother and the section where it kind of intersects with the Sawmill River Parkway is an adventure to say the least. So I did this pothole analysis purely out of boredom and I know that there could be a lot more data science done in order to try to really get a great reading on where roads are bumpier or less bumpy. A cool experiment to do might be potentially to kind of segment the time series into kind of a rolling 30 second window and count the number of major and minor bump events during that rolling window to kind of give the road an overall smoothness score. Another thing that you could do is do the same experiment with different vehicles and use it, use the readings to kind of compare their suspension. I'd love to also basically do this on the Metro North Railroad, which I used to take into work because I think that that is kind of a very, um, very invigorating ride sometimes as well. And I encourage people to take this uh, application, which is available publicly on GitHub. I will also make the spreadsheet and the map publicly available and link them in the description and run your own experiments, enhance it. I did this for fun because I'm a transport nerd and I'm curious about kind of how we can measure the quality of our transport, whether that's kind of the bumpiness of the roads or anything else and I think it's really fun to just for fun go out there and put numbers on the world that we live in day to day. Thank you for watching.